Oh, how lucky and Mike can we be? You don't see Mike Chibnick, Bruce? I just see me over the corner. Let me, uh, <laughs> see, I wanna, there we go. Let's see if I zoom this way. There's Mike Chibnick, just his chin. Uh, Not by the hair of chinny chin chin. Yeah. You know, it's uh, getting dangerous because Thanksgiving's coming around. Oh, it's so called a turkey neck. <laughs> it's all bought and paid for. So how's the, how's the weather been up there? Extra? You know, I, 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 I'm a little bit ashamed of it because all the wild turkeys around here, they don't have what I have. <laughs> You're the leader of the pack. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh man! Yeah, we almost hit a couple today trying to get out of the place. We're in your driveway, you're saying? Well, on on the main dragon uh, trilogy, we got herds of them. Um, I should show you how at every night they they chose this one spot, the, the, and the people are livid because they can't get rid of them. Uh, they got these sycamore trees, and at sundown, they all kind of hem and haw, and they kind of flap a little bit, and they mill around, and then one takes off, and the whole, like, 100 turkeys fly up into the tree. Yeah, they, they are birds, and uh, unlike uh, the Tyson variety, uh, you know, they have all their flying faculties, and they're, they're trimmed for flight so to speak so they're up in the sycamore tree yeah hmm. Cut so the tree part, some what no Cut no no, no. this is a trilogy <laughs> you know. so uh but uh yeah there, I don't think uh, we do not, we do not have butter balls around here the, the only butter balls are the ones with the uh old guys in the uh, golf carts on the uh on the golf course, uh, drinking beer, you know. Um, <laughs> Sounds like so, a plan. What do the turkeys eat in your area? What are they eating? Uh, unfortunately, they, they eat some of the shrubbery and stuff that people plant. Um, and they, they, all, they eat green and bugs and stuff like that, you know. Think, look my brother-in-law has field. a couple of big tom turkeys on his property, and he feeds them. Sometimes they get really aggressive uh, and they attack people too. Um, yeah. they, uh, I had a, a nephew in Massachusetts that owned a, uh, a used car lot and there was this turkey called uh, Fred. You know, I'm going to call him Fred and he grew up and, you know, people fed him. And then one day he started becoming real vicious and started attacking people. So. Did they roast him? <laughs> no, but the uh, but the newspaper, local newspaper, said Fred is dead. Oh, <laughs> Freddie's dead. Yep, yeah. Fred's dead. You know, but, temptations. Uh, you know, it's like you know um, that emu on was it Mercury uh, Insurance or whatever. You know the insurance Ooh. company. Liberty. Yeah. Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. Those are dangerous birds. They can tear out your stomach. Well, they got a spike on the back of their legs too, don't they? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. they're the modern day velociraptors. Yeah. Only yep. they don't have teeth. But, uh, Leftover dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're the modern day dinosaurs, as you said. Well, birds so, are Mike, modern how, day dinosaurs. How's the observatory weather been up there? Well, last week we finally had a chance uh, where the winds died down. It was clear. It was actually warm at night. Uh, tonight, the smoke has come back and the winds haven't. But uh, so I was trying to take some images with my new camera and I'm having some difficulties with the uh, with with the new camera for whatever reason. I'm I'm having also difficulties with uh, uh, taking planetary shots. Okay, um, with the 
with the uh, C11, you know? Well, the C11 on there, it's, yeah, I, even though I have, this is what they call a star, hold a second, I, I, I don't have to share. Um, okay. Oh, you look so, better. Yeah. Okay, well, because you can't see them. Okay, can you see this here? Right. Okay, so this is a star test. You notice how the stars are kind of like they're um, smeared you know, vertically. Well, this horizontally and, and vertically, and this is a test on PhD guiding. And even though PhD guiding tells me that I've got like six tenths or four tenths of an arc second error, I'm getting streaks on my um, stars from the longer periods of time. And I know I've got pretty good alignment because um, when I was looking at um, Jupiter in a relatively small box, I stepped away and came back about five, 10 minutes later and it shifted just a little bit, but was still in the box. So um, what I'm concerned about is that these uh, crosshairs, I think should be um, equal. Those are your guide stars? No, um, basically, um, in this test, what they tell you to do is you've got your 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 your, your guide uh, camera. Okay, what it does it it um, causes the um, back and forth, you know, an X Y type of thing, and then on your main camera, this is the main camera. This is a, a picture with the with the floor ten. And you can see where um, it's not symmetrical for whatever reason. So I've got to go and figure out how to get around that. Mike, what um, is that bright object in the middle? What is that? That's M32. Oh. And so with this new camera, um, with, with this native C11, I get most of this galaxy. And the C11 full. Are, are you, Mike, are you using a Barlow to get that tight on M32 by itself? No, actually, it, um, it, it extends out way, I mean, it's, it's really big. I, you know, I've got, a, this is a full size 35 millimeter sensor. And so uh, it's got a lot of, a lot of view. And uh, I think this is only like about a five minute exposure. So you know, things are being smeared around. Uh, I mean, How do you align your scope? Do you have a polar alignment scope as part of the scope? I, I use the uh, uh, QHY full master, and then uh -huh, I, check okay. it, I check it with drift. Uh -huh. And so at least this is what I got out of that. This is what the 410 does when you close in. Uh, this is Jupiter taken with it. This is the same camera? Same camera, okay. That's a pretty nice picture. Well, yeah, I've taken better, but you gotta remember the pixels here are like almost six microns. And so I'm only getting about, was it six tenths of an arc second resolution, maybe a little bit worse than that. Um, but, uh, yeah, and so you can see this has got good dynamic range because a lot of times you can't see the moon. There's the moon there, and this is the planet. So this is showing off the uh, the full well capacity of 120,000 electrons, which most cameras don't have. And that's the reason why. So can you bring this in like Photoshop and expand the, uh, the uh, change Oops. the gamma? Uh, yeah, this is about... So you can see uh, the, the moons and Jupiter? Well, yeah, there's the moon right there. Uh, I don't see it, but uh, whatever. Yeah, I, I can see it. Uh, I can yeah. see it. Well, you got a bigger screen. Yeah. Yeah. But, so it's, but, Mike, Mike, is that a stacked image or is that just one individual image? Okay. Um, this is a stacked image. And what I used now... Um, Second here. I'm, I'm using a new program. Um, this here, it's, hold a second. 
Can you see this program now? PIPP? Yeah, PIPP, um, which is a- Oh yeah, that disassembles video into individual frames. That's right, and um, it has the option of making things look a lot better. Um, and what the reason is, if I could show you some of my other stuff here. Let's see here. This is this. You're going to run out of hard drive. I've got, uh, I purchased a five uh, terabyte drive. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I figure $100 a year, that should keep, keep me going, you know. Okay, sharp cap. Uh, I got to change my, uh, the way my operating system uh, uh, talks to the disk. I limited two terabytes, so I have to split my drives. <clears throat> yeah, so here is, I'll show you the, the, the jiggles. So this is, this is what I get all the time, and um, PPI kind of works on that. Um, now, one of the things I've noticed with the Mesa mount, I got to talk with the, the guy, is that you notice it's not j uh, jiggling up and down in declination. It's the RA is is jiggling around. So there's something going on there. You think that's a result of the uh, guiding, jiggle, uh, moving it, but no, not this quite is, right? Uh, this is open loop. Oh, okay. Okay, so we go, whoops. Now, Mike, is that a crop of the full frame to get down to Saturn like that? Yes. Uh, um, you, um, that was uh, that was with my other camera, my ASI one seventy eight, which I I'm I'm also fighting with now. It's sort of like now that I'm 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 fighting with. Uh, different things. Um, okay, so here's the Jupiter with the 410. Oops. No, I don't want that. So here's, here's Jupiter. And um, one of the things that I um, need to work on, in this case here, this viewer doesn't like the, the Bayer matrix. You notice that it's got uh, it, it's got blockies, you know. It's got lines through it too. Yeah, it's got lines through it. Yeah. Bob Richard was having that problem with his uh, camera also. Yeah, so I gotta figure out why why that's happening. So that's with the 410. Okay, so this one, um, I I enlarged the area. It's using a lot more uh, disk space, but it's you can see the three moons there in Jupiter. Yeah, I, okay. I can see three moons there. Yeah, and and you can see the detail. Normally, with a lot most of these cameras, you can't. You know, I was noticing there's somebody had a program, Arkansas something that derotated uh, Jupiter and Saturn. To keep it from smearing, there's, there's a, it does some way of, a, of so you don't get the, you know, when you're stacking, you don't get the smeared look on Jupiter. Yeah, uh, when Jupos, I've, I've got that. Uh, so here is another version. But oh, so it rotates the image automatically, huh? Yeah, right. So that you can uh, concentrate on the uh, stuff. Let me... But that's only a problem if you have a Dobsonian, if you have a, a, an equatorial no, mount. No, no, no. You start taking um, images of Jupiter for any length of time, the rotation really um, okay. affects it. So, Because I've taken 30 second exposures of Jupiter and I haven't yeah. noticed that. Yeah. So this is PIPP where I don't, um, I don't keep it stabilized. There's a setting, so you can see how it's just jiggling in RA. Well, is that our atmosphere jiggling, jiggling in? I have a feeling this is the mount. Oh, really? Because what, who, what be mount is it? Down, makes it? Wouldn't it be along all axes? Whose mount is it? 
It's a misu. I didn't yeah. understand that. It's a misu, M-E-S-U, 200 mount. Okay, I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, most people aren't. Uh, how I wind up, I, I know why, because my, my ex-boss said, Mike, you gotta go buy this, because uh, it's good. And uh, so I did. Okay, this is pre. Um, oh, this is pretty zoomed in because you can see the individual pixels real easily. Well, no, I think this one's in the case of the Bayer. Why does it look like I'm looking through a window screen when I see it? Uh, because of the Bayer um, sequence. Oh, uh, okay. The, the, the programs. <laughs> in this case here. Okay, in this case here, you don't see it because um, PPI automatically detects the uh, the uh, the proper Bay, uh, the Bayer images. You know, there's like four different four different combinations, and you know, chances are you won't uh, uh, see uh, get the right one. And in this case here. Um, it's just the, the Bayer major, uh, you know, it's not giving me my proper Bayer decoding and it's just, you know, screw things yeah. up. Is that one through a Barlow? Uh, this is with the, um, with my planetary camera. So what I did was. Um, and your the, planetary it, camera is which one, Mike? It's a ASI 178. It's got two point. So it's got a smaller, pixels. smaller sensor. Oh, it, yeah, it's a, a point, I mean, one over 1.8 inches, whereas on the... Uh, but it's got a lot of pixels then. It's, it's got a, it's, it's like six megapixels. Oh, wow, but, that's, but, and that's so reasonable. It, and so it's a good combination with the C11 because it gives me less than a um, half arc second of resolution, so... I really don't need a, a Barlow with it. Um, and so, um, and it also has a dynamic range of 14 bits, which um, compared to some of the other ones, uh, uh, they're not so good. My so Nikon D500 uh, in the, uh, the the raw mode does 14 bits to yeah. also. So this one's a, a um, kind of zoomed in. So you can see how it's just kind of shaky and um, I'm fighting that. You can see with the, the scenes going in and out. I don't know if part of my problem now because I, I used to get better resolution. This is just because I'm in the dome. And so I'm sitting in front of the telescope inside the dome and um, I'm probably stirring up the air with my, uh, my body heat. So, Let's see what it so, so, Mike, you need to stop breathing for five minutes or something. And... No, I, I, I need to, 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 to wear a. Uh... That's the moon, isn't it? Yeah. So. What's that, Copernicus? Yeah, I think so. Um, or or Tycho. Be... I have to... I, no, Tycho has very straight straight lines. Copernicus, it was a much lower speed impact and all the ejecta kind of rolled around and made wiggly yeah. lines. Yeah, you can see on, uh, in this case here, this, this night was very good seeing. Why? Because it was hot and the, the air was full of particulate matter because we weren't getting any uh, decent uh, um, you know, winds. is oh okay so this is with the 410 the other one was with the 178 and you can see that the full moon just about fits into the sensor of the uh the 410 so if i'm going to go take a, a full moon shot i'll be using a focal reducer so that means this kind of means that 
on the average, I've got about a half a degree of, of uh, coverage with, with this telescope. You're talking the C11 with the F6.3 focal reducer? No, this is with, this is with, uh, this is native. This is a 100, 110 inch focal length for the 35 millimeter sensor. Oh, oh. on your Canon uh, D6? No, this is, um, this, uh, well, it would be with a, a 60. In my case, I've got the, this is what I'm using now is the QHY410. So, so, so this image was taken with a QHY410 looking through which telescope? A C11 directly. And through C11, and you get the yeah. half, half, half degree view. Just about. I mean, it's more than a half a degree um, lengthwise and just a little under half a degree. Um, so in a way, what this kind of means is that um, for some of the smaller objects, I might be at a disadvantage just because they're going to be so small in the frame. I'll have to crop in quite a bit, you know, like on smaller well, galaxies. Well, again, you, you could you could add a Barlow. Huh? I could, but that means it's F20. And, you know, that really, that quadruples my exposure. So, um, I think I'm still doing okay. I, I mean, when you get down to it, the original CCD cameras were like 12 micron pixels. That was like the original size. And pe people seem to be very happy. Um, the smaller pixel size cameras, um, they, uh, you know, where they're like three microns or something like that, um, you can get away with a shorter focal length telescope. Or you, if you put it on here, they're really blown up. Um, but they don't have the dynamic range. I just wanted a camera with a ultra wide dynamic range um, so that um, I could. Oh, here's, here's Neptune. Cool. Not much to look at. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, the scene was a bit worse. Pretty shaky. Well, it, I think it's the atmospherics, you know. It, 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 there's, there's a lot. I mean, where you guys are at, okay, uh, uh, this is where it's not blown up. Um, so, when you say when it's blown up, well, how do you, how do you blow it up? Is it just well, choosing the different it. results? It's, it's basically cropped. Okay, you can crop you can the see, video. Yeah, you can see right here. Yeah, um, with sharp cap you have the ability to do a region of, of interest. And so um, like with the 178, it's 3,000 by 2,000 pixels or whatever it is. But that slows down the camera because you're shoving more uh, pixels off the camera. Um, yeah, I have, up, I have sharp cap. Space. I I think I understand what you're saying. You can change which resolution like you can go down to 640 by 480. Or you're even 320. Um, yeah. And what that allows you to do is increase your frame rate, um, frame rate, which is really what you want. And so with the, um, I was doing that with the, the 410 because the 410 is really slow. And uh, with, the, uh, with the 178, if you do it right, if you have short exposures and relatively small space, you can be like over 200 uh, frames per second, which really helps you with the lucky imaging. Right, right. I, I know I, sometimes I start wide to try to find the object and then I can reduce the resolution size down to after I know where, what are, where I'm going with the, the object. Yeah. That's the hard part for me sometimes. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, you're, you're right. And so a lot of times what you can do is, well, you can uh, bend it. And so who cares whether it's kind of blocky looking. Okay, so here's a, another. Okay. 
Why is it making me next thing? But in this case here, it just doesn't like the, the Bayer thing. And I, um, I think that if you're having problems with your, your Bayer, the best thing to do is to use BIPP. It's, um, I just discovered today that it was fixing things. And one of the things that I need to do is learn some all the ins and outs, you know, it talks about being optimized for planetary ISS. Mm. Uh, but another important thing is um, planetary animation where you could, uh, um, in a relatively small file that you can send out to people, show rotation of the planet with, with some of these um, features. So you go through here. You got your, your source file, the active source file, like here. And, uh, doesn't like, well, okay, so, and then you've got your input options. Uh, I've got binning disabled because they recommend not binning it. Um, D bear. Um, important. I can't remember, was PIPP, was that a free program or did you have to pay for that? It's free. It's, a it's free. free. Yeah. Um, one of the important things for WinGPOS, if you want to get more accuracy, is that um, you're supposed to be able to, with Charcap and other ones, to um, put in the time and date so that WinGPOS can figure out how to de-rotate your image. Um, as it figures out things. And uh, let's see here. Color frame auto detect, yeah. Although. Um, I... <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. What? Okay. This Tom, here. I sent you a picture of the moon that I took through my uh, C8 and my uh, Nikon D5200. This right. is a stack of 15 pictures. Here, why don't, why don't I just stop sharing? You can, okay, now you can go and share. Can you share from <laughs> your, can, uh, Bruce, can you share from your tablet or? Uh, not easily. Um, okay, well, let me, let me, let me do a share. Let me go bring up my, my. Uh, I can, but I have to get, I have to see if this picture is on the tablet, then I can share it. It may be. Did you send it to Tom Says at Gmail or? or Tom Says. Tom yeah. Says at uh, Gmail should be. Whatever, whatever, I, whatever it was here. I don't have it yet. He, probably just, he just sent it to me, I think. I just sent yeah. it to Tom. OK, let me I get off of here. I can uh, send it to you. No, that's OK. Let me just give. It, it's not picking it up yet. Cox has not got, grabbed it yet. Well, so what? Uh, that's Cox. <laughs> so, so the main the, the main thing keeping me from really enjoying my my new camera is oh, it's still looking up. What's going on here? Is so is getting the the auto guiding working properly? It didn't send it out. That's what happened. Right. So, Mike, yeah, you're worried about the the auto guider not doing the right trick for you, huh? That's right. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I've been kind of like troubleshooting it over a couple of nights. That's is that's PhD two. PhD two. What I might try and do is use. Yeah, I went out that time. Astroart. Astroart has its own. Um, um, it's its own auto guider routine built in. I discovered something. If you remember, I used to complain about the Deep Sky Stacker not working. Well, I um, accidentally unchecked the box on um, white balance compensation on for the camera, and uh, it kept me from stacking. So uh, it's one of those things where you could move your cursor over the wrong place accidentally. 
<laughs> with the um, get the wrong option. Yeah, Bruce, yeah, I got your option, and then you're into battle. <laughs> I sent it. I didn't go out the first time. I sent it to both you and Mike. Yeah, I got it the next time. So hold on, I'll get it here. Show so what you're trying to show us. It says Registack fifth try Photoshop hypersaturated. Okay, hold on. Let's it, see. It's a stack of 15 pictures. Wow. Let's see. That's that's nice. Let me see this. I'll I'll get it showing here in just a second. Sh a share screen. And there. So you super saturated with the uh, so you could show um, the material. So that the reddish areas when you super saturating were they were they like normally if, uh, with the naked eye would would you pick up would you that? Pick up? Uh, no, if no you well, the naked the it's all black and white. You know you don't see it. But that those are colors that if you were close to the moon you probably would see. Yes, that's a correct. That's correct. I wonder if that's iron oxide. It's well, the, the big mares, so they're probably basalt. So there's a lot of iron oxide and basalt. Yeah. Um, the, this this kind of in a way shows you um, the chemical makeup of the planet in a way. Did you guys ever see that one picture from uh, uh, the spacecraft looking back at? Uh, at Earth with the moon in front of it. Oh, and that the, gets published moon, a lot. Yeah. And the moon, the moon looks black in front of the, the sun, even though it's being lit, because the moon's huh. extremely uh, got a. It's an extremely dark object. It's incredible that if it was like made out of water ice or something like that, yeah, you would be able to drive at night without your lights on. <laughs> About the surface reflectance of the moon is about 16 percent. How much? Six percent, one six. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Yeah, I, it's about the same reflectivity as a, a lump of coal. Maybe a little bit better, but uh... so that's why they keep coming up with these whiter whites and blacker black paints, huh? You know, uh, you know, they were talking about uh, that ultra white for reducing um, um, solar loading and all that. That only works if you keep your house clean. Yeah, in 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 a place like the San Joaquin Valley or where you have forest fires, um, all of a sudden your roof becomes dingy. You know, I don't know about you, uh, but when. When I was in Santa Barbara with, with the fires and all that, I had to keep on uh, brushing off the ash off of everything. You know? Yeah, we, we still get our coatings of dust every night. Yeah. Well, it's a copper roof, which absorbs a lot of heat involved as ventilation there. Yeah, but, but, what you, uh, but it also radiates the heat, too. Uh, theoretically, you could probably if you had if, if you had copper pipes in your roof, you could super cool um, the water and cool your house off in the daytime. <laughs> it looks and like there's a lot of, and, lot and of air pollution. And hot water for for bathing. <laughs> yeah, still a lot of air pollution in California. California. Oh, yeah. Um, go up to uh, the Sacramento area and you'll see that it's pretty, uh, yeah. Well, that's where all the yellow is up there. That's where I live. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was on the, on the south, the part of the upper part of the bay. Yeah, I am right here. But see, it's still, we still get some. You can see some yellow. Okay. Um, is, there, and is there some new fires that have fired? I think so. I guess down here. Well, you've got you've got the words Sequoia has is 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 it's got a fire. Yeah. Sequoia National Park. I guess still going on. Well, the redwoods have survived fires for a thousand no. years. 
Well, they're they're very concerned because the uh, the intensity of the flame is really destroying them. The, and the drought has affected the trees. That's right. Yeah. And the fact that we haven't been clearing away the brush like the Indians did for so thousands more. of years. For years. You're breaking up, Bruce. I said, let me move my mic around. You can also thank Smokey the Bear for storing fuel up for a hundred years. Yes. No, I'm serious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We understand. So the Miso 200 mount looks like this, Bruce. Uh, that's the new version. That's the newer version? Yeah. Did it come with a, did you get a wooden tripod with it? No. It, it, I just got the, the, the mount. If you take a look there, the, the top of the thing here, the, the picture is the version one. Maybe the secondhand mounts? Uh, these are, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's see if it shows. Uh, nothing nothing available. Yeah, people want them. Um, just the tripod would be better damping, right? It should be less vibration. Well, and, and that's another thing, too. I've got to work on my uh, peer. The peer is, I'm not getting that non spiky thing. I think there's something wrong. Uh, but uh, just do a search on the Misu 200 Mark One. Loud, baby. Good drinking. Yeah, that's it. That's what I have. Friction drive. Friction drive. Oh, friction drive. It's drive, huh? Yeah. It um, has um, low periodic error. Yeah, but with friction drive, the yeah, production shows too much depend on the pressure they use the little rubber, whatever, to go against the big air. The big no, this is circle. strictly metal against metal. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Somebody wants 5,000 pounds for this thing. Half the price, right? Now, right after, right after I got mine, he came out with one that broke down into two pieces, which uh, is, is something to think about when you're of our age, because this weighs like more, a little more than 50 pounds. On the, on the tripod? Well, no, just the mount itself, the head. Uh, uh, that's the, the counterweight bar is like 10, 15 pounds. And so, uh, and, and the, and the new 30 mount, pounds, I, uh, was pro mount to 11. You're you're the, breaking up, Bruce. Still, yeah. So the uh, the new I don't know version, why. Yeah, the, the new version has cable routing, which mine doesn't. So you have to be very careful. Okay. Pro, put thirty. So counterway counterbalance the seal So it's like. Better, you're, you know, still, you're still breaking up. Uh, make sure your connection is proper. Well, let me twist this thing. Is that any better? A little bit, yeah. The, going into the... You got to cancel all the other programs on the tablet, huh? No, I don't... <laughs> I don't have a computer it's on my big computer. Got to go to Costco, Bruce. Get a nice laptop. I don't, you don't even get a, la a nice laptop, just a, um, what is it, a Chromebook? Chromebook's yeah, I wonder, how, I wonder how, those Chromebooks, they seem pretty expensive. You want to get a halfway decent one, it seems like. Might as well get a regular 
Windows 10 laptop. Yeah. 10 laptop. Well, yeah. The, the one thing good about Chromebooks that if you get something that screws up your computer, you can do a power wash. You know, just, you know, takes everything off and puts it in the um, proper. You need access. So here they're talking about debayering with the PIPP. Yeah. That's not your problem. You, you've got you take care. So you have um, a no, you have a color my, image, right? Well, for my I've got two problems. One for long uh, long duration. The other is for I'm not getting the best uh, uh, output with uh, the, the the 178 uh, lately. And it could be that when I went from one camera to another, it probably upset one of the settings inside. Because I did try it with different types of cameras. And so you could have flipped a software switch. Well, uh, you know, if you have vast turbulence, it should help get rid of the bare problem because not pixels exactly line up. One frame will be a green pixel on this part of the page, another will be a red pixel. So when you have a whole bunch of them, they should be an actual color. Mm -hmm. No, but uh, you get those blocks, you know, the blocking is that means that your, your debayering is not proper. Oh. Now, this is kind of weird. They're showing three of the 50 images, and, and it's showing Jupiter, but I don't know how you could stack these because Jupiter, the red spot, is on one of them, but it's not on the other ones. I think it's different times. But I don't understand how those three images could be put together. Um, I think what they're trying to say is that, I don't know. These look like they've already been put together. They're pretty crisp. Yeah. Well, it says here's three of the 50 images, full size to show the material that should be used to generate the final animation video. Well, look, well, uh, I, uh, all right. Well, I, I, I'm not well, maybe the key word is animation. Yeah, they're trying to show Jupiter rotating, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you wait hour, wait eight hours, it goes all the way around. That's right. I don't think they'll give us a full, the full video. Okay. Interesting. And then when Jupos, oh, yeah, that's. Oh, so this is, yeah, the Russian site here. You know, I've never been able to get a picture of Jup of Saturn that's that clear. Isn't that nice? So I wonder how much time was involved here. I've gotten Probably fairly, several nights. I've, I've gotten fairly good, but you really, uh, it's, it's seen... <clears throat> Your scene has to be really good. There was a night here that the seeing was just incredible. You could see not only the things on you, but you see all the little bitty details in them. But, you know, those nights don't happen very often. Yeah. That was up here on the East Camino, West Camino Cielo. Well, you should, I mean, if you were like at Bacara, you know, right at that cliff, then the nights would be more because at, at that point, right at the ocean, you should have very little turbulence that you'd be landing on. We've had pretty good luck going to the old uh, highway bridge that is at uh, Arroyo Hondo. It's close to, to Artos, but you can still, we don't actually go out on it. It's kind of, kind of a hike, but there's a big parking lot there, and you're separated from the highway by a big berm, so you don't see the lights. Mm -hmm. And because, again, you get the same thing the that you get at uh, Refugio, that the downstream wind mm -hmm. clears away the, uh, the pollution, and you get pretty good images. Well, you may clear away the pollution, but you, you have to worry about turbulence with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Can you show me where Rio Hondo is? South Pass oh, Refugio. Here's a Royal uh, Honda. Oh, a Royal yeah. Honda. A Royal Honda, right. That, isn't that what I said? Okay. The Vista Point. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. So when you say you're on the bridge, keep going in. It's right where the 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 creek goes underneath the freeway off for Royal Hondo. You actually get on this old bridge. Yeah, yeah there's an old oh, bridge there. Oh, 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 I've gone by there so many times. It, it's pedestrian only. Spot. You can't you can't drive out on it. So no. what you park over here? Yeah, there's a big parking lot. A lot of semi trucks park in there, and then you see the the. Uh, yeah. Oh, I've never. I've for as many times as I've gone by there, I've never gone to that place. But you you park over here and then take your telescope back over to the bridge. No, we park. You can see where the off ramp comes in and makes the big sweeping S turn. Right. We park right. basically when the S turn stops right there where you're right there. Okay. Because there's a big enough berm that it blocks the freeway, and uh, it's it's pretty good seeing, and you don't have to carry your telescope so far. Right. Jeez, I've, 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 you know, like I said, for as many times I've gone by there. Sounds pretty good. The only problem is when a semi comes in and then decides he's going to do something and have all of his lights on, and for a long time. If he doesn't, if he doesn't come in all the way, huh? Well, normally they come in there, they park, they turn the lights off, and they go to sleep. That's yeah, I'll have to try so that sometimes. Is, is that the original Highway One? That's the original, yeah. The, the part that goes straight. It's a it, it's a, a cast concrete bridge, and it was deemed uh, not no longer safe for cars to go over. And this is a railroad bridge. Art, well, no, it's an automobile bridge. Right. The right. railroad bridge is made of steel. It's it's the lower thing. Yeah. It's a standard railroad bridge with a big triangular, or uh, right. uh, you know, not triangular, but uh, uh, trapezoidal pier underneath. And the the uh, automobile bridge was cast concrete. It's a uh, cast concrete arch bridge, <laughs> much like the. Uh, Arch bridges to go what you do when you go to uh, yeah there you go uh, we go to go over a number in the background there go if I can go this way oh, yeah see where that car is that's where we park yeah right. I can see and there's a damn uh, somewhere <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can see the little left by the red sign, the non-enter sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what that's where you go to get to the bridge. It's probably a hundred feet, two feet. Mm -hmm. But we'll go down to it. Very cool. And All I right, any, is there anything else anybody wants to present this evening? We call it quits a little bit early. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm so work, work on stuff. Yeah. Oh, go. By the way, um, I'll be expecting my three axis uh, table to come in so that I can get my interferometer going. So your you, your voice got weak there, Mike. You're expecting a three axis something? A table for my interferometer. Oh. A kit. Yeah. Oh. So uh, um, I've been needing to get that going. Uh, I, if you remember, I made a table out of uh, gator board, and the hinges are not folding up, so I, I broke down and bought a kit, and so I'll put that together. So, because I, I really want to get going on uh, the 10 inch and the next 14 and a half inch uh, here. I think those have been on hiatus. So. You'll have to show us what that part that you're getting on the screen at okay. some point. I'll, I'll do that when it's all together. I'll, I'll present. So. Very good. Uh, very good. Okay. Okay, gentlemen. We'll see you. Yeah. Take so care. stay out of the ashes. Hope those fire smoke will clear. And uh, I just hope I can get this stupid out of that. And, and Tom, are you going to go to the uh, camp out? I think I'll drop in. Yeah, I was going to take my telescope up there. I want to talk to Chuck uh, Schuler and see if he wants to go. I don't intend to stay overnight, but uh, 
Right. At least go up and set up and, and look Kachuma, at the sky. Casitas? Yeah, Lake Kachuma. You know, the camp out. Yeah, the, this, this Friday, I guess. Friday, Saturday. Right, public, right, right. Is it a public outreach? or? No, no at this a, one isn't. To, to, they aren't going to have the, the uh, potluck or any of that stuff. It's at Mohawk Shores. Come on down, Mike. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you turn right. You turn right, just just on the other side of where the store is up there. And then you take this road that kind of winds down and goes all the way around, and finally you end up at Mohawk Shores. The weather doesn't sound like it's going to be good. It's going to be partly cloudy. We'll see. Yeah, I'm afraid of that. Okay. Well, well, I don't have to go. I'm going to keep my eye on it. Right. Right. Okay. John, okay, guys. Go. Take care. Been, been good to do a little show and to do a little program and Give my well, maybe next week we'll have more people show up. Yeah. Okay. More views. Keep working. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye now. Good night.